welcome to the Creative Introvert Podcast. My name's Kat, and I make this podcast for the creatives who get their energy from within, who enjoy their time alone, and who are most effective when working solo. Today, I have arguably the most controversial guest, or at least the most controversial conversation I've had on the show so far. Uh, Don't worry, it's not political. And I say controversial because of this guest's take on introversion. And it's not just any old take on introversion. Today's guest is a lot more qualified than I am, or many other professional online introverts are, to talk about this stuff. Dr. Scott Barry Kaufman is a psychologist at Columbia University, exploring the depths of human potential. He embraces a humanistic, integrative approach to help all kinds of minds live a creative, fulfilling, and meaningful life. Now, I don't want to give away too many more spoilers about today's show. I just want you to dive in and listen, hopefully with an open mind. And if you're anything like me, you will have a lot to think about after hearing this podcast. And you can find the show notes for this at thecreativeintrovert.com slash Scott. Enjoy the show. Hi, Scott. Thank you so much for coming on the Creative Introvert podcast. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. And I just love the phrase creative introvert. So I mean, I'm doubly excited. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good combination. Um, I should start by explaining um, why I'm going to be particularly nervous on this podcast. Uh, and that's because I admire your work so much. Um, and maybe many of my listeners, I'm sure, already know about the Psychology Podcast. Uh, but also because of an article I read um, that y- you wrote. Um, I read it, I think, quite a while ago, but I've been kind of always been in the back of my mind. Uh, it's called, I think, will the real introvert please stand up? Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and my fear is that by the end of this interview, it will come out that I'm actually not an introvert um, <laughs> because of some of the things we might talk about. And, and that would be terrible yeah. for, for many reasons. Um, would that get, put you in an identity crisis? It would completely. Yeah, I would have to go and uh, seek some real hardcore therapy uh, to deal with that. So. <laughs> Um, so to begin with, I, I ask all my guests, Hope not. <laughs> I ask all my guests, uh, do you consider yourself to be an introvert? No. Okay. I, I think I'm a neurotic extrovert. Right. Right. Okay. Interesting. We'll, we'll cover this, um, in today's show. I actually show. wrote an article about that as well. Okay. Oh, you'll have to send it to me. I'll put a link in the show notes. Oh, yeah. okay. I wrote an article, Confessions of a Neurotic Extrovert. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Great, yeah. great title. <laughs> yeah. So, Thanks. Um, so I think a lot of neurotic extroverts think they're introverts. Yeah. Well, well, this is it. And you know, I wanted to ask you, what are the misconceptions of introversion, and why are we kind of misdiagnosing ourselves as an introvert? I know there are multiple reasons, which we can dive into more. Well, it's very tricky because um, people like Susan Cain, who I adore. Um, who uh, have but have written about this in the public um, include a much more comprehensive definition of introversion than how psychologists do. Uh, researchers who study it just view it as the opposite of extroversion in the Big Five uh, personality framework. And extroversion uh, comprises two main components: assertiveness and um, a sort of uh, social vitality. Um, and, you know, interestingly enough, uh, so that's it. Like, so to the extent to which you score low on those things is that you're more introvert, on the more introverted side. It's a, it's a spectrum. Um, there's no, like, demarcating line between introvert and extrovert. Um, the more you score higher, the more higher you are in extroversion. Um, and you could score high in one of those two facet, two aspects, um, and and well, in the other, like I, th- um, like you can score higher in like let's say social vitality and social like interest, um, and uh, and lower in uh, assertiveness or or vice versa. Um, the thing that seems to be in common um, among both of those traits is sort of is an ener- is being energized by social rewards. So extra those who score higher in extroversion. Um, tend to particularly novel social rewards like meeting a stranger or going to a dance club or going to a concert. You know, you get you, networking. You know, extroverts uh, <laughs> those who score high in, in extroversion love networking. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so uh, and and that's really it from a personality framework. Now, uh, Susan Cain, you know, has uh, like I said, has a much more encompassing definition of introversion that basically includes everything good under the sun. <laughs> so she's like, "Are you an introvert if you're really smart? <laughs> if you're <laughs> imaginative? I mean, she knew how to sell a book, <laughs> right? Right. Um, but I don't think she did it strategically. I mean, I, I mean, she's she genuinely believes this stuff, you know, and, and she's, she's an introvert herself. Um, and so she wanted to show, shine a, sh- a spotlight on, you know, some of the strengths that introverts can have. But from a scientific perspective, just cause you're introverted doesn't mean you're going to have all those other goody things. <laughs> and, you know, let's be honest. Um, there are a lot of introverts who go, um, and are school shooters. I mean, uh, to to take a very serious example, I mean, it's not like you know, like 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 it, you know, there's there's just as many asshole introverts as there are those who are caring and kind, the kind that Susan Cain talks about, who are, you know, have this great sensitivity to uh, uh, the caring of others. Plenty of introverts don't have that sensitivity. So let's you know, the, the, I think that's why science is important. Yeah, it's almost like there have been all of these different definitions of introversion and extroversion um and what we're kind of talking about at least like what i would consider myself being part of are people who are like let's celebrate all of these like you know sensitive creative uh traits but actually scientifically it it doesn't match up with the like the scientific definition of these words yeah it's not that kind of stuff falls within a different personality domain, which just varies independently, and that's openness to experience. Right. Can, yeah, and, uh, I was going to ask you about that. Um, I think you also call it intellect slash ima- imagination. Is that right? Uh huh. Yeah, that's right. So explain that because a because bit. they have different openness to experience has those two aspects. It has intellectual curiosity as well as um, an openness to imagination and fantasy and artistic uh endeavors um so there there's a lot of things that fall under that umbrella of openness to experience i think that an awful lot of the characteristics described by introverts is really a different domain of personality and 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 why is that important you know someone could say well scott that's so nitpicky and like like who gives a shit? Like it's a different domain of personality. Like well, I don't care. Like I'm gonna call it introversion. Like screw you. But this is why I think it matters because, I mean, these dimensions. You know, we need. It's important to view each of ourselves as a unique combination of a whole person of many different combination of many different things. Life experiences. You know, in, intelligence levels, creativity levels, um, personality across multiple dimensions. Like, it's not just one dimension of personality that makes you you who you are. You have a lot of these people out there with the identity introversion act as though that's the only thing that they are. Like, you know, it's like I'm an in, I'm an inter. You know, it's like no, you're a lot of things. You're you're more things than you probably realize. You know, a lot of introverts probably don't even realize just how much you know, social uh, skills they have up their sleeve because maybe they put limiting notions on who they are. Um, so I think that's why it's important to, 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 to recognize that actually extroversion is correlated with openness to experience. That's that. By the way, that's a finding that pisses off introverts whenever I say that. It pisses off Susan Kane when I tell her that. <laughs> She's a dear <laughs> friend of mine. So we have these kind of conversations. It pisses, you know, pisses her off. It, it kind of like that, that, like the truth, you know, kind of messes with the narrative that, that introverts are trying to put forward. But the truth is that, you know, like on average – if you tend to have higher levels of social vitality and assertiveness, you too tend to actually have higher levels of intellectual curiosity and um, and uh, interest in artistic things and diversity of interests um, because dopamine, you know, courses through all of that. So, yeah. So, I mean, I, I like to geek out about the science uh, because I think truth is kind of important. <laughs> Yeah, truth is important. Um, it's one thing that um, I think we should probably clarify for people is you're talking about. Um, I just lost your entire audience. Didn't I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're going to get some hate mail. Don't worry, guys. Oh, no, I, we'll, I, I, <laughs> no, precisely, I lost half of your audience. Oh, right. The creative, 
<laughs> are like, Crazy. oh yeah, I'm open to experience. Cool. Scott gets me. The the introvert side's like, okay, we're done. <laughs> we're done with him. <laughs> uh, but, you can, you, but you can be a creative introvert. You can have that. You, my point is, you can. That's a unique profile, which is a combination of things, and that does exist. The creative introvert does exist. So absolutely, I want to uh, say that off the bat. Yeah, and, and I'm wondering a bit more about that. So a creative introvert would be somebody who does score highly on openness to experience, right? Yes, um, absolutely, has to be. They could be an introvert or an extrovert, according to your crazy model, right? <laughs> Why is it crazy? No, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm obviously joking, but it's, it, is it called the, um, the five-factor personality model is that yeah what you're talking about uh, they, and, and that's uh, yeah. the only one that like is approved by real <laughs> scientists right that's the only one that's got a stamp of approval on it <laughs> science approved <laughs> that's so funny um yes it, it is actually yes okay so i mean i talk a lot yes. about the myers briggs um here but i not, think you're not gonna not yeah approved. no Right. It's, it's interesting. I mean, maybe that's another discussion altogether, but, um, and, and I think this is, I actually write about this in my book a bit, how, like, I think it's easy for introvert, like creative introverts to really love the Myers-Briggs because, you know, we're usually all coming out as like INFJs and all of these kind of nice self-reported traits, which result in, in like a nice label that we can, um, hang our identity on. However, as soon as we take the big five, um, or the five factor, um, test, we, we might get traits that we don't like the sound of, like hearing that we're neurotic. Um, exactly. is, is it like people don't like that label. I just think that they should rename a bunch of these. Well, what about instead of renaming them, people actually were honest with themselves on, about, because honest. like, I, I think that's a, <laughs> I think it's a better, I think self-honesty is a better path forward to growth than renaming things and sweeping them under the rug so you feel good about yourself yeah no i i 100 percent um agree i think uh we we take these tests usually to feel better about ourselves rather than to do the actual work of um looking inside like seeing where our, our limitations are and so yeah. the neuroticism to me has been relabeled as a nicer thing by elaine aaron she calls it the highly sensitive person Right. Let's talk about that because this is something that I think... That's we'll... just neuroticism. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you've definitely <laughs> lost a lot of my audience because... Um, so, so one thing that yeah, I've got a quote from you. Many people think of themselves as introverted because they are highly sensitive. But research shows that sensory processing um, sensitivity is independent of introversion. So, so you, oh, can get a, you can get yes, a that's true. highly sensitive extrovert as well, of course. Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I think I'm one. Right. And, and so what's that link between um, neuroticism and high sensitivity? Is this? Well, see, Elaine Aaron came up with this scale mm. to measure this construct of the highly sensitive person. But it turns out that when you do run the numbers, her scale is correlated like extraordinarily high with neuroticism in the big five. And a little bit with openness to experience as well. So one could argue that the highly sensitive person construct is a blend between neuroticism and openness to experience it, within the big fight. It has nothing to do with the introversion, extroversion dimension whatsoever. Right. It's like that's irrelevant to it. It's a, it's a blend of neuroticism and openness to experience, in fact. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm thinking now, maybe I should just like rename the podcast to the... Um, <laughs> The neurotic, no. open. <laughs> well, no, because pe because it, the, in modern day parlance, I think people. This is the thing: is that everyday folk have a different conceptualization of what introversion means than what scientists uh, how they measure it. So, uh, you know, I, I and I don't think that's necessarily wrong, uh, a bad thing. I um I have written about this, um, uh, and uh, you know, I, I think I wrote about it in Will the Real Introvert Stand Up. Uh, because I talk about there's four different types, you know, Jonathan Cheek has studied because just because of that problem, Jonathan Cheek has been like, well, look, let's look at the different blends and come up with four different types of quote introversion. Mm. Um, and you know, there, there's no reason why we need to, uh, 
uh, trust the label of introversion as just the opposite of extroversion in the Big Five, I actually do make a case that it'd be better for the Big Five researchers to not refer to introversion as the opposite of extroversion in the Big Five, because then that frees up introversion to be a blend um, mm-hmm. across the spectrum of multiple characteristics, and then it gets more in line with Susan Cain and the everyday layperson conception. I actually think that um, it uh, the opposite of extroversion in the Big Five is uh, really just... Uh, uh, um, what did I say? I, I wrote it in one of the articles. Uh, non-attachment or... Uh, yes. No, um, yeah, it was... Something like that. D- d- well, detachment, I think. Uh, I have Detach- to... Detachment, that's right. Where did I... Yeah, that was really interesting. Uh, that makes more sense. Yes, so something you say it's when you're talking about sociability. Extroverts aren't necessarily more sociable. I'm quoting you now. Uh, they do experience more positive emotions throughout the day, regardless of whether they're social or otherwise. Introverts experience less. Um, some researchers right. have suggested that detachment is a more accurate description of low extroversion than introversion. Yeah, I think that makes that makes more sense. Um, we're just talking about you know how energized are you by social rewards, um, but I think that like lay people, they think of introversion as something more about like where do you get your energy? Mm. Do you get it from like do you get energized by social interactions or by um by your own thoughts like your own inner inner world and that people you know that was Jung's idea but I mean it turns out that Jung was wrong (laughs) in the sense that like modern day science has shown that they're actually separate independent dimensions you can a you can simultaneously be both energized like I'm energized by social rewards and I'm energized by my internal thoughts it's it's a horrible false dichotomy to split up the world between those who are either energized right. by social interactions or energized by their thoughts that like creates an artificial uh, division between people <laughs> well wow, that's that's really interesting and something that I've kind of struggled with is is that characteristic in myself like I would say that I am um, what are the two words that you use uh, enthusiastic, I think, is one, and assertive, right? For the That's most part, exactly. I think enthusiastic is with social vitality. Yeah, yeah and I think yeah. at my core, I am that, but um, there are layers over that which are like layers of neuroticism. But at my core, when I'm at yeah. my best, I am definitely enthusiastic and assertive, and I think a lot of people in the audience are as well. It's just that, and especially if we start like uh, telling ourselves that we don't want to be around people, or we're following all of these like instagram um accounts with like memes about introverts hating people yeah it's like I've seen maybe them. that's yeah that i don't think that's healthy I, that's probably not doing us any favors when actually we can get a kick out of these I, external things yeah i think that's right i think that there's a real uh, i've 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 uh i've pointed this out to susan i i, I just i think that there's a real um uh uh cycles that can happen with people spending all day on the internet talking about how awesome they are as introverts and how they're fine just being antisocial and uh but a lot of those individuals who and that's fine to say that there's nothing wrong with that but there is uh, it is problematic from a clinical psychology perspective when you're doing that and that's not actually who you want to be so if we deceive ourselves to think like oh it's Fine that I weigh 500 pounds. It's look at how beautiful I am. It's 2 a.m. Accept it versus like, oh, well, you know what? I really kind of do wish I, I took some steps to shed some of these pounds. And, you know, like that, that's the question is what do you really want? And, 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 and take a good hard look. Are you really deceiving yourself? You know, like um, are you really just trying to justify something because you're scared of uh, like you've created all these avoidance m- coping mechanisms in your life to deal with the pain of rejection so you are scared to actually talk to people uh, but you do know that you would love to connect more with strangers and in new situations but you're just scared to do so if it's scared that's neuroticism see that's not the introversion domain that's a different domain does that make sense it does it's like um we have to admit what we're um actually wanting because if if you were to take the opposite of extroversion is detachment somebody who's truly detached from this stuff just they don't care they genuinely don't that's care. right whereas i've definitely experienced this thing of like let's say it's a networking event and part of me the bigger like the 
probably the, the more real part of me is saying, mm, I know I should go. I know I'll probably enjoy it when I'm there. Actually, that depends. Some of them I like truly do not enjoy. But let's say <laughs> there is something that, you know, I, I could get out of it. Then the neurotic part will kick in. So like, yeah. and that's something it sounds like you can, I mean, that, that's my next question. Can you work on these things? Um, like, let's say there, there are the five um, traits uh, described by the five factor model. Are they set in stone or like, which, which can, are any of them like workable, especially neuroticism? Oh, absolutely. I wrote an article for the Atlantic called "Can You Change Your Personality?" and uh, I, I'd argue that absolutely. I mean, you can you can work on all your traits. Please, please send your uh, listeners to that article. Yes, that'd absolutely. be really great. Um, I should say that that uh, Susan Kane and I did a scientific analysis to come up with her. Have you taken her introversion test on her website? Yes. Yeah, I'm an introvert, according to Susan Kane. And me. Because oh. I, I developed that test. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think I knew yeah. that. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So, but you so did... we wanted to come up with an alternative to the big five introversion yes. that was scientifically grounded. And we found that one could justify this alternative model that comprises the two components that I think your listeners will actually resonate more with. Um, and that's deliberation and stimulation. So one, I just, you need to take more time. See, I think you're an introvert by uh, the the alternative test we have on Susan Cain's website and an extra version in terms of the big five. Yes. But um, because uh, deliberation, I can tell you're, you're, you're very deliberate and you don't like to jump uh, to say things. You like to think things through um, very carefully. And I don't know about your stimulation levels. Like, I don't know how much like, you know, loud sounds, you know, um, disrupt you. You know, we haven't had an opportunity to test that. Um, but, um, uh, uh, and I won't test it, don't worry, but I won't like scream, but, um, uh, yeah. Um, but, uh, but a lot of, but I think a lot of people, Susan Cain's audience really resonated with that, that, that other alternative model, more stimulation and deliberation. What are you, what are your own re resonance with that over the assertiveness and enthusiasm? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think, um, it, it feels more familiar to me, uh, to talking about those particular areas, um, the thing that is interesting to me, though, is that stimulation thing, because that's making me think of, well, it's making me think of, like, highly sensitive um, people, so as defined totally. by Elena Aron. The thing that I was looking into recently, or maybe it was last year, not so recently, is the difference between HSPs, highly sensitive persons, and uh, being a high sensation seeker, and the fact that you can be both. Have you looked into HSS at all, like high sensation seeking? Oh, absolutely. Um, and so uh, that is a very interesting link. Um, high sensation, you know, one, one could, you know, argue both ways that the more overwhelmed you get, the, uh, the less your tolerance you have for sensation seeking. Or you, one could argue the opposite and say that if you're a high sensation seeker, if you're high, highly sensitive, you want to like control the situations in which you are um, high sensation. So you actually are a high sensation seeker, but under under very controlled conditions. Mm -hmm. For instance, um, uh, the guy who free climbed uh, one of the highest mountains in the world without any rope. Um, is a high sensation seeker, but he's like described himself as like severely introverted, mm -hmm. and um, uh, and and he's very methodical and deliberate. Like he would score very high in deliberation. You know, like uh, everything was very planned. It's like planned sensation seeking. So I think it, I think it really depends on like what is the kind of sensation seeking that um, that, that that you go for. Um, right. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, that definitely seems to be uh, how I describe myself. Um, it's like, I, I want fun, but I want to plan the fun. Like last year I yeah. did what I called a year of fun, which was every week I did something oh, wow. that I would call fun. But yeah, trust me, all of those things were planned out. And if anything kind of took me by surprise, it became less fun. Um, so oh, so that's, that. that's interesting. Um, and yeah, and, and something else that you were saying was, oh, actually, this is a quote from Colin D. Young. Um, that, oh yeah, he's my homeboy. Really? Yeah, I. I, I he's a I good friend. That's good. Um, do you have any? Um, you oh. must have interviews with him on the podcast. 
I do, yeah. I'll try to find some and link to them. Um, but yeah, he says, they may also find levels of stimulation that are rewarding and energizing for somebody in high extroversion, merely annoying or tiring. So this, this kind of difference between something that is like stimulating for an extrovert might not be stimulating for an introvert. Uh, that's right. And, and that seems to describe me a lot. I know that like even as a kid, I remember clearly a teacher once saying, oh, we're going to treat you guys today. We're all going to play this game. And I can't even remember the game, but I knew I didn't like it. So I asked if I could just sit and read a book instead. <laughs> and I was allowed to do that. So, <laughs> But yeah, that, that I think describes um, many introverts quite accurately. Um, and why, why is that? Yeah. Why do we find some things less interesting? Oh, well, that's a biology. <laughs> um, I mean, that's... Um... You know, the the term highly sensitive is an interesting term because each one of the big fives actually evolved. The variation in each of the big five personality traits evolved throughout the course of human history because they um, were sensitive to different kinds of stimuli. So actually, each one of those big five we can go through is actually you're highly sensitive. If you score high on it, you're just highly sensitive to something in particular. So extroversion, you're highly sensitive to social rewards, right? right. Conscientiousness, you're highly sensitive to um, to goals. Um, uh, neuroticism, you're highly sensitive to threats in the environment. You're always on the lookout, you know, for threats and uh, and, th- and and things that can help you re- reduce your uncertainty. Um, uh, and agreeableness, people who are in agreeableness are very highly sensitive to opportunities to um, to pro-social and uh, connection with others. They're highly so, you know, like, uh, which is different than social rewards, by the way. You know, mm. um, a lot of, there are a lot of extroverted psychopaths. I mean, who get, I mean, <laughs> they're very excited about, uh, the, the psychopaths are very sensitive. They're sensitive. To, I mean, that, that's, the word, that's the thing with the word sensitive. We throw it around like, you know, like Kanye West, uh, says he's sensitive, you know, like, yeah, it's like you know, what? like, well, the thing is like narcissists are very sensitive to slights and to reject to people criticizing their, their, who, who say they're not great. Is that a great, is that a good thing to be sensitive to that? Right. Like to, is being a highly sensitive person necessarily a good thing? Yeah. No, everyone's like, a I poet. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Not everyone's a creative introvert. <laughs> as you, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I wrote an article that uh, would really piss off your audience called 24 Reasons You're Secretly a Narcissist uh, Masquerading <laughs> as a Highly Sensitive Introvert. <laughs> Did you see that one? I have, I have. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll link to that as well for anyone brave enough to read it. Yeah. That could be but a spin-off I, show. What did you say? That could be a spin-off show of the creative introverts, like the creative introvert <laughs> yeah. narcissist. Yeah, yeah. And I want to be clear, like, you know, like, I think real introverts exist. I'm not, and I'm sure you as the listener are one of those so that you don't get pissed off. I'm saying, but th- we, we conflated every, so many things that you've just, so you've all these people, like these like highly narcissistic, uh, there's a kind of narcissism called vulnerable narcissism, which I've been studying, which is highly, highly correlated with uh, neuroticism, a blend of neuroticism and introversion um, and, uh, and antagonism as well, like low agreeableness. Um, and people who are very, very high in vulnerable narcissism, like, you know, will, will say like, oh, I'm such a sensitive soul. Like people don't get me. People don't understand me because I'm so sensitive. You feel like no one understands you because you're a narcissist. Like, you know, like, like (laughs) in this instance, I do think there are sensitive people who feel like they're misunderstood and, and that's a real thing too. But I'm saying there are a whole subset of people who are co-opting the term highly sensitive who are really assholes big time <laughs> yeah i think this is so great this is like just reminding me the limitations i'm keeping it real <laughs> yeah no it's yeah i think it's refreshing um but it's also just reminds me the limits of of labels um and you know we are just totally we're more than labels for one and i think if we just like meet somebody and if they say like let's say they're on a, like a, a dating profile oh yeah i'm like highly sensitive and all of these things maybe reserve your judgment until you actually meet the person and don't, yeah, yeah. don't just go by this label. Um, yeah, I think that's really helpful. Um, so- I'm not a fan <laughs> of labels. As a kid being labeled with a learning disability, right. that was not a uh, great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think it's, um, it's time to at least uh, make sure that people are cl- clear on, on what these labels mean. Um, 
I do think creative interests exist, by the way. Yeah, no, you, it's clear. Don't worry. I don't think you, my audience, I like to think are a bit hardier than, than that. So I don't think you've um, <laughs> made too many enemies. <laughs> Um, yeah. So, so thank you, Scott. Um, I just want to respect your time and uh, wrap up by uh, asking you, like, what have you got next? What's down the line for you? I mean, people will be able to check out um, your podcast if they haven't already, but anything else in the pipeline? Well, um, I do have a big announcement coming up, oh. which I, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm like on the cusp of, of saying, but I'm not, I guess I'm not there yet, but uh, look out for a big project coming out in uh, April of next year. Great. Um, and um, uh, in the meantime, yeah, I, I hope that your listeners will, will enjoy the psychology podcast episodes. Um, I have, uh, you know, they can listen to my chat with Susan Cain, with Brene Brown. I mean, there's a whole bunch of people that that introverts love. Um, and then, <laughs> and then like I, and I love them too, actually. Um, and, uh, you know, by the way, extroverts can love things introverts love, and yeah. you know, I, I want us, I want us to live in more of a like a world where we like. This is just a pet peeve of mine in this day and age. We live in such a world where people's identities are dividing us, mm -hmm. and you see it in politics, you see it in, um, in religion, and um, there's so much fighting. And I would just love to see a world where there was more of common humanity, yeah. um, and that even in our discussions about introverts versus extroverts, we had more of a uh, of a common understanding of what common experiences are because as I write in my how to change your personality article like we're all um experience the whole range like mm. to 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 have a certain personality profile means you just show a certain habits of behavior but it doesn't mean that you never show the other the other habits uh that you never show the other experiences we we all have common experiences at one time or another so I, I like to focus on those Right. And it's, it's so much more like nuanced than just, are you this or this? And even saying, oh, it's a spectrum. It's like, uh, you know, th there are so much more of it. It's not just this one line. Um, personality is, is really complex. And I've, I've learned a lot from uh, listening to your podcast and realizing that. Um, so complex. Don't tell me when I'm wearing my Captain America uh, <laughs> t-shirt. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Pajamas. Yeah. No, no one will have to know. <laughs> Screenshot. Um, but, but yeah, that's, uh, that's basically it. Um, I think like, let's start talking about these things and um, sharing experiences rather than saying, this is why we're different. I love that. Um, I think that I, 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 I like, I think identity is important, but I think uh, common humanity is, is more important uh, uh, to lead with, you yeah. know, um, I, I think there's just too much of this kind of like, well, I am X, you would never understand what it's like to be me. Right. You know, I, I think when you actually look at the science, the latest science of personality, you see that um, uh, psychologists call personality as density distributions, which is an incredibly nerdy way of saying that throughout the course of our day, I introverts are just more, f more uh, er have more introverted behaviors on average throughout the course of their day, but they still show ones, twos, threes, all, you know, they still show all the ranges of the personality continuum throughout the course of the day. They have bursts of extroversion. Right. It's just, we're just talking about frequency distributions. That's all between people. That's it. We're not talking about different people yeah. or different like species of people. Yeah, yeah, no. And I think, um, thinking, thinking about it in that way, really frees us up to have more diverse experiences and like make more out of life. Yeah. Also, be more flexible. Yeah. Well, Scott, thank you yeah. so so much. Um, and where can people find you online? Do you want to give some links for people to connect with you? Thank you for giving me that opportunity. Um, it's uh, scottbarrykaufman.com is my website site. Uh, my website, and I have personality tests on there. I have self actualization tests. Uh, I know it's, so it's, it's our favorite <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I have, I have t like all uh, scientifically valid tests that are not the big five. They're, Amazing. they're new ones that I've tried to develop because I, I do think that there, there's more, you know, that I, I think I've been really try getting into the, what are the characteristics of self-actualization. Um, so, uh, I'd love for your listeners to take my self-actualization test and drop me an email. Let me know their score. Yeah, no, that's what sounds, they thought of the test. That sounds great. I'm going to yeah. do that straight away after this. So, uh, <laughs> oh, will you do it as well? You, yeah. You'll do it as well. Yeah, okay. Sure. Yeah. I'm really curious. I'm really curious. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll discuss that maybe at another time. Um, but yeah, Scott, thank you so, so much. And like, uh, appreciate your time. Have a lovely evening.
Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. And if you've been enjoying the podcast for a little while now and would like to say thank you or support my time and energy in creating future episodes, well, you can. If you go to patreon.com slash creative intro, you can see my page there outlining different ways to support the show. For as little as a dollar, you can see all of the rewards that I give back to my generous supporters. These include everything from live monthly Ask Me Anythings, like Q&A sessions, uh, to online masterclasses on topics ranging from marketing your creative work, increasing your confidence, getting clients, and doing work that feels good to you, and so much more. I really appreciate the support. As you probably know, I don't get paid to do this. In fact, I pay to do this because the podcast has to be hosted somewhere and all of that stuff. But yeah, you know that I would do it anyway. It's just that I get the fuzzy feels when I see somebody who's taken the time to throw a dollar in the tip jar. So thank you for that. And of course, there are other totally free ways to help me out too. You can spread the word on social media, tweet about the show, tag me in your Instagram stories. I'm at Creative Intro on all of the platforms. And as you probably know by now, you can help other people find the podcast by leaving a rating and or review on Apple Podcasts. Thank you in advance and thanks to everyone who's already supported and done your bit for the creative introverts out there. All right, enough of me blabbing. Thanks again for listening and I'll catch you next week. Bye.